The geology of Oregon is a course designed around the geology of the nine geophysical provinces of Oregon as described in relation to the broad regional geology of the Pacific Northwest. The objective is to familiarize the student with the terms and the general geologic concepts, including rock types, plate tectonics, volcanology, paleontology, the concept of geologic time, and geomorphology of our beautiful state. In this photograph, the Precambrian gneiss and schist that make up the majority of the steep walls of the Black Canyon formed 1.7 billion years ago during a metamorphic period brought on by the collision of ancient volcanic island arcs with the southern end of what is present-day Wyoming. The lighter colored pegmatite dikes that can be seen cross-cutting the basement rocks formed later during this same period. The continents have joined into supercontinents at least six times during our long geologic history. Er, from 3.0 to 2.8 billion years ago, Kenor Land, 2.7 to 2.1 billion years ago, Columbia, more commonly called Nuna, 1.8 to 1.35 billion years ago, Rodinia, 1.07 billion years ago to 750 million years ago, Pinocha or Vindia, 620 to 550 million years ago, and Pangaea from 335 to about 177 million years ago. The Archaean rocks 2.5 billion years ago had already collided and combined to form the Archaean nucleus or craton of North America. This is known as the Cheyenne Belt, a major discontinuity in the Cordilleran basement and the location where additional exotic lands would attach to the craton about 1.8 billion years ago. The Mazatal Island Arc, as seen approaching from the southeast, would collide with North America and form the Mazatal Mountains of South Central Arizona about 1.68 billion years ago. So there are three phases of development of the basement rock in western North America Cordillera. The Cordillera is an extensive chain of mountains or mountain ranges. Mountain ranges of this type have a complex structure, usually the result of folding and faulting, accompanied by volcanic activity. Those three phases were as follow. First, the rocks in Montana, Wyoming, and northeastern Utah were formed from microcontinental collision by about 2.5 billion years ago. Next, the basement rocks were accreted onto the ancient craton that is now located in Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and the rest of Utah. And thirdly, the western half of the Cordillera, British Columbia, Nevada, California, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho did not have basement rocks until they were attached piecemeal after 375 million years ago. The Precambrian Vishnu basement rocks exposed in the bottom of the Grand Canyon were metamorphosed during the collision between the Mojave and Yavapai terrains with the Archaean rocks of the Craton. The Vishnu basement rocks are the lowermost Elves Chasm gneiss, as shown in the upper photo, and the Vishnu Schist, as shown in the lower photograph. The Vishnu Schist is nonconformably overlain by Paleozoic sedimentary rock. This nonconformity has over 500 million years of missing rock record. In the upper photo, the Vishnu Schist are medium to high grade metamorphic rocks that formed during the collision of island arc exotic terrains with North America about 1.75 billion years ago. In the lower photo, the Mazatl quartzite was deformed and metamorphosed later during the Mazatl orogeny when another island arc, the Mazatl Island Arc, collided about 1.68 billion years ago. 
Most Precambrian rocks in Colorado belong to the Yavapai province and were metamorphosed about 1.75 billion years ago. In the upper photo are quartzite and schist in the Unawit Canyon. In the lower photo, the Uncompahe quartzite crop out. Mesoproterozoic rocks outcrop from Arizona to Montana. These rocks represent deposition that occurred during the assembly and fragmentation of Rodinia. Exposed in the upper photo is the Apache group, and in the lower photograph, the Grand Canyon supergroup of sedimentary rocks. The sandstone composition and presence of stromatolites indicates that this area was previously a very shallow sea. The Grinnell Formation that crop out in Glacier National Park is another formation that is part of the Mesoproterozoic Belt Supergroup. These are rocks that were deposited between 1.6 and 1 billion years ago. The Grinnell Formation were deposited as near shore sandstone shell, now argillite, basically lithified muds and oozes, and siltstone. This is a late Proterozoic Paleogeographic map of Laurentia. Note that the western border of Laurentia runs from Arizona through Nevada, Utah, Idaho, and Montana. At, the t at that time, Laurentia was located on the equator and rotated about 90 degrees to the east. At about 100 billion years ago, the Kalahari Craton collided with the western margin of Laurentia, forming the the continent of Rodinia. The Mesoproterozoic was the first period of Earth's history of which a fairly definitive geological record survives. Continents existed during the preceding era, the Paleoproterozoic, but little is known about them. This is a paleogeographic map of Rodinia about 1 billion years ago. The supercontinent existed between 1.1 billion years ago to 750 million years ago. After the breakup of Rodinia, the continental masses of the Mesoproterozoic were more or less the same ones that exist today. With the formation of the supercontinent Rodinia, mountains already formed by previous collisions reached incredible heights around 9,150 meters, or about 30,000 feet, and initiated a great period of deposition into basins along their margins. These mountains were eroded down to the roots of metamorphic and granitic rocks. The rocks stretched from Alberta to Sonora and from central Nevada to the Great Plains. Here we see Paleozoic rocks nonconformably overlain by Cambrian rocks. A nonconformity exists when sedimentary rocks overlay igneous or metamorphic rocks. As Rodinia split from North America, it opened the Panthalassa Ocean and initiated a long-lived passive margin setting. Here we see some of the rocks of the Cordillera's long-lived passive margin, the Tapete Sandstone, overlain by the Bright Angel Shale, overlain by the mauve limestone, representing deposition from 1 billion years ago to 400 million years ago. The passive margin allowed for the deposition of huge thicknesses of nearshore and carbonate marine sediments on the continental shelf and slope rise. Paleogeography of North America 750 million years ago during the opening of the Iapetus Ocean and the breakup of Rodinia. The western edge of the continental crust, at that time the northern edge, trended from southeastern California northward through central Nevada, Utah along the eastern Idaho border, through Montana and along the provincial boundary between British Columbia and Alberta. Note the orientation of the equator at zero degrees south. A few slabs of continental crust were left stranded north of northern Laurentia, much like Madagascar today, 
was when it split from India after the breakup of Pangaea. At about the same time as the start of the breakup of Rodinia, Earth experienced extreme global cooling. This was the snowball Earth, a deep freeze that began around 715 million years ago and held Earth in its icy grip for a good 120 million years until about 595 million years ago. There are no other comparable glacial periods on Earth. In the upper photograph, the Chuar group in Eastern Grand Canyon was deposited in a wide variety of marine, lacustrine, and fluvial environments. The Chuar group rocks reveal heterotropic life, animals that rely on nourishment from other organisms that existed around 700 million years ago. Stromatolites reveal warm, shallow marine environments. Elsewhere on the planet, a snowball earth is found up to the tropical latitudes that lasted for 350,000 years, sometime between 720 million years ago and 650 million years ago. As the continental group, rather as the continental crust continued to extend by rifting the area of the Iapeta Sea, normal faults occurred and then sediments poured into the basins. Today, both the Pahrump and Chuar groups always appear as tilted beds in the landscape. In the lower photograph, we see the Pahrump group in Death Valley, California. The Cambrian Precambrian contact probably lies within the tilted ridge of the marine rocks. During the Cambrian period, Western Laurentia had a very simple geography with increased terrestrial settings to the east and marine settings to the west. As the Iapetus widens and arcs approach eastern North America, the western margin remained passive. Global paleogeography at the beginning of the Cambrian about 540 million years ago. During the Cambrian period, the shoreline was positioned 90 degrees clockwise from its present orientation, such that the shoreline ran east-west and about 10 degrees south of the equator. Southwest North America during the Cambrian transgression about 505 million years ago. Through time, the sea transgressed over the continent to cover more and more of the Laurentian margin. As the seas transgressed further east or south from the Cambrian perspective, either by rising seas or sinking land or both, finer grained sediments interfingered with sand. Then they in turn graded from shales into limestone, a finding upward sequence. Paleozoic sediments were influenced by the Wasatch Line, a tectonic hinge trending from Salt Lake City on the north to Las Vegas to the south. Occasionally, the sea encountered the tilted Meso- and Neoproterozoic era sedimentary rocks. So we're looking in both images at the outcrops above the Great Disconfort formity exposures that can be seen in depths of the Grand Canyon and Whirlpool Canyon along the Green River in northern Utah. In many places, the Cambrian period sands buried an undulating Precambrian topography. There was a passive margin along the then northern coast of Laurentia that lasted from Neoproterozoic era to Middle Devonian from 1,000 million years ago to 400 million years ago. This resulted in very thick sedimentation of the continental shelf of the then Panthalassa Ocean, what is today the northwest and western portion of North America. Quiet passive margin conditions existed in the Cordilleran region and much of Laurentia for about 600 million years between 1,000 million years ago to 400 million years ago. No terrains drifted in from exotic locations to attach to Western North America.
During the Ordovician and Silurian periods, most of the cratonic mass of Laurentia was inundated by shallow Epiric marine seas. An Epiric sea is a shallow sea with a minimum depth of 39 meters that inundates a continental mass due to transgression or sea level rise. As shallow marine conditions dominated, the evolving life forms are found in near to perfect environments for their existence and preservation. Since some geologists hypothesize that the long-lived margin conditions set the stage for this evolutionary leap from primitive life forms to multicellular complex life forms. In the photograph, we see thick early Paleozoic limestone and dolomite in the Spring Mountains west of Las Vegas, Nevada. 